students, Professor Gray here. I need to talk to you a little bit about the Bunsen burner. So there are many varieties of Bunsen burners and here are a few pictures of the different varieties that you guys might see. And right in the middle of the slide is Robert Bunsen. Now he didn't invent the Bunsen burner, but it's named after him because he perfected it. Now, if we go on to the next slide, we can talk about the different parts of the Bunsen burner. Now, this big old thing right here, that's called the barrel. And I'm gonna tell you the purpose of the barrel in just a minute, but before we talk about that, we have to talk about the gas intake valve, which is right here. So this is the gas intake valve and this is where the gas goes in now it's not gasoline gas it's natural gas and natural gas is a mixture of mostly methane and a little bit of ethane and a tiny bit of propane and some other stuff and the formula for methane is CH4 and ethane is C2H6. So methane looks like this if we draw it out and we'll get to drawing structures in chapter four. So don't worry, that's coming and ethane looks like this. What you'll notice is that those two molecules are made up of solely carbons and hydrogens. So those type of molecules that only have carbons and hydrogens are called hydrocarbons. And hydrocarbons are really good for burning. Okay, so the gas comes in through a tube and before we light it, we want to make sure there's no holes in the tube. So we've got gas going in there. And right here, this area right here, we have the collar. And in the collar area, we have the air vents. And we can rotate the collar so that the air vents are closed or they're open. So in the picture to the left, it looks to me like they're closed. And that's why I got you this picture right here where it shows it's open. So you can see this little area right there where air can go in. And what we're looking for from the air is oxygen because to have a combustion reaction, you need oxygen. And the form of oxygen that we're looking for is O2. That's what we breathe in. We're not breathing in single oxygens, it's O2. So the gas comes in and the air comes in. And this little guy down here, this knob is called the needle valve. And the needle valve is going to adjust how much gas comes into the barrel there. So that's for fine tuning of our gas. And this nice thing down here, that's called the base. And that's for support. So that's to keep our Bunsen burner nice and stable so it doesn't fall over. And like you saw on the other slide, there's a bunch of different shapes that we can make our base into. All right, so we have gas coming in, we have air coming in, and they both go up into the barrel. So the barrel is where our air and our gas mix. Okay, so we have a lovely mix of the air and the gas right in there. And those are the parts of our Bunsen burner. Now on the next slide, it's gonna show us how we're gonna light the Bunsen burner. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we've got gas coming into the Bunsen burner and we're going to adjust the needle valve so we can hear the gas coming out. It'll make that little tss sound. And uh, some of the videos on the internet will tell you to close the air vents all the way so you would grab the collar region and rotate it and close it all the way and then some websites will tell you to have it open just a little bit i like to have it open a little bit so we've got some air in there and then you're going to grab this thing right here which is called the striker and the striker has a piece of flint on it right there. And when we put our thumb on one of these little pieces right here, uh, it's going to cause this metal piece right here to slide over the flint and we're gonna get a spark. And when we have a hydrocarbon plus oxygen plus a spark, we get a flame and you guys can see that right here. So we have a lovely flame over there. Now, most of your pictures and your websites will show the person working with a Bunsen burner having gloves on. I have a little bit of an issue with that because if you have gloves on and those gloves get too close to that Bunsen burner flame, it's going to melt that glove onto your skin and you're gonna have a hard time getting that off. So the, if you get burned, which you shouldn't because you're paying attention and being really careful in lab, but if you do get burned, it's a little less uncomfortable if you don't have a piece of molten glove on your skin sticking to it. So anyways, that's just Professor Gray's preference there. All right, so once we light our Bunsen burner, what we'll get is a lovely flame. And if you've got the air vents closed, what you'll have is a yellow orangey flame. And if you have the air vents open, what you'll have is you'll have a blue flame. Now, if you think that your flame is too high and you want it to go lower, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and adjust the needle valve so that there's less gas coming in and you'll see your, your flame lower. Again, if you wanted to go from your orange flame to your blue flame, you would grab the collar right there and you would rotate it so that you open up the air vent and you get more oxygen in there. And why is that? Well, our blue flame is showing us complete combustion. Now, what is complete combustion? Well, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a hydrocarbon, and here's the general formula for a hydrocarbon. Now, don't worry about the N or the 2N plus two. That's not like calculus 2000 or anything like that. The N is just a number, so N equals a number. And the 2N plus two means that you multiply that number by two and you add two. So if we were looking at methane, methane is C1H4, and so N would be one. And so if you did two times one plus two, that's gonna equal four, and that gives you the number of hydrogens right there, okay? So what happens is we have a hydrogen excuse me, we have a hydrocarbon plus oxygen, you give it a little bit of spark, you have a flame, and then you get carbon dioxide and water. Now, why do we not see water running down the sides of our Bunsen burner when I've just told you that a combustion reaction is going to give you water? Well, the water is really hot and it's in the gas form. So the gaseous water is taking off like that. So it just goes into the air and we don't see it. Now what would happen if that hot gaseous water hit a cold surface? Maybe it hit a cold beaker. What would happen if it hit that cold beaker? Probably the same thing that happens when water in the air 
hits your cold soda cup that you got from McDonald's or Carl's Jr. or Wendy's or Del Taco, wherever you go, and the water hits the cold cup and it condenses, and then you would have liquid water, and that's the droplets on the outside of your cup. That's not your cup leaking water from the inside, okay? That's the water vapor in the air condensing on your cup. Anyways, back to the complete combustion reaction. So we're also giving off energy here. Oh my goodness, my pen. Okay, there we go. We're giving off energy. And with our Bunsen burner, we can feel the heat energy and we can see the light energy. And it's very hot. So it's giving off a lot of heat and we can see that the light energy is also high energy too because that blue color is indicating to us that we've got a short wavelength or a high frequency which gives us a high energy um, flame. Okay, so down below our yellow flame why are we getting a yellow flame? Well, we've closed the air vent, and this means that we have incomplete combustion. Now, incomplete combustion's given us that yellowy, orangey, sometimes reddish flame, and that's a little bit cooler than the blue flame. And that means that some people call this the safety flame, but it's not really safe because it's still hot and it will still burn you. So just so you know, sometimes it's called the safety flame and sometimes this one, the uh, blue flame is called the heating flame, okay? Now, incomplete combustion, what does that look like? Well, we take the same hydrocarbon because we have the same kind of gas going into the Bunsen burner and we're gonna react it with oxygen because we need oxygen for combustion. But because we've closed the hole right there, we're not getting a whole lot of oxygen to that hydrocarbon. The only oxygen that is available to the hydrocarbon is the oxygen that's coming in from the air on the top of the burner right there. So we don't have the oxygen and the gas mixing in the barrel before we uh, have the flame on the top. So there's a whole lot less oxygen there. So what this uh, combustion is going to make is it's still going to make some carbon dioxide, but it's going to make a whole lot less of it because we don't have enough oxygen to be making a whole lot of carbon dioxide. But what we make instead is that right there. So if CO2 is carbon dioxide, what do you think CO is? That's carbon monoxide. So we're making carbon monoxide, and that's not really a good thing because carbon monoxide is toxic to us. The iron in our hemoglobin that's in our red blood cells it likes carbon monoxide a whole lot more than it likes the oxygen molecule, the O2. So the carbon monoxide will stick on to our hemoglobin and that means that the oxygen can't get there and that means that our red blood cells are not taking oxygen to the rest of our body and that means that we suffocate. So we don't want to be in a closed room with a bunch of Bunsen burners that are having a yellow flame on because that would be um, bad. Okay, so what the incomplete combustion flame also makes because it's lacking oxygen is just regular old carbon. Now, carbon comes in a few different forms. It has different allotropes. And you'll learn about that in your lecture class. So we can just have charcoal or graphite, which is what you write with with a pencil. You don't really write with lead. It's actually carbon in there. It's graphite or diamonds or a bunch of other forms. Now, the form of carbon that comes off your Bunsen burner is definitely not in diamond form. That would be really interesting. This is soot and you've probably seen soot before if you have a fireplace in your house it's that black stuff that's on the back of the fireplace 
that is just carbon deposited on your fireplace. You'll also see this if you have a fire pit or if you've ever made a campfire, okay? It's that black stuff. And we're making water, but we might be making a whole lot less of it because we don't have a lot of oxygen available and water takes oxygen to make. And we're also making energy. The big E is a symbol for energy in science. But what we have is the yellow flame instead of the blue flame. So we have less heat and we have less energetic light. So we are giving off less energy with our yellow flame here. Okay, so that is the end of the Bunsen burner lecture. Yay!